Hi everybody, big welcome back to CDHTV Gameplay. I'm back with Master Transcendent. I kind of like it, I played it on Death's channel, it kind of worked okay there as well. But I, I, I want to play this it more, give it a go. It's kind of cool, milling. We're playing a different build now, this time we're playing with Hermit Druid, Fasos and Dread Return, but also a Rasa combo basically, and together with some other cool stuff in general obviously tainted pact and consult for fasas i'm playing essica again as i always have and this is just an essica build with a lot of good five color stuff not necessarily over focused on creatures definitely a higher number of creatures but it's got breach lines it's got thoracle it's got a bunch of bunch of good stuff hey i'm playing lily drake's list from a recent tournament yeah so it's dark malcolm basically malcolm and vile smasher and this time i will try really hard not to mess up that glint horn buccaneer combo because i had it in my hand last game and didn't do anything with it i don't know why but this time we'll see if it can be a pirate's life for me today i'm bringing Etsu Aditori, the frenzy <laughs> it is basically just your five color value pile uh, this specific deck is called Etsu if I'm not coping, because I have a cope version of it, but that ended up just being too bad. So this is just your average five color value pile. We run the good green and white cards, but we're basically Grixis. Let's draw our starting seven. This time there's a lot of the things we want. We have a turn one Ragavan, which is fine. It's basically good to work with upside. <laughs> upside and downside. The big thing is that we don't really have a lantern two, and without the lantern two, we don't really have a play or so our turn two easily gets very awkward here uh we could gamble on having a land if we get a crypt on top it would be amazing as usual with having crypt on top <laughs> but yeah as the hand is right now i'm not really wanting to gamble on it on a first seven so let's see what our second seven gives us our second seven was a lot better <laughs> uh yeah this is just great once again we would love to have one more land because we have a land and a Mox Diamond right now. But like, this is just gas. Uh, we have a lot of mana going into our turn two, and we have the wheel for turn two, so we can just immediately wheel. Uh, we can almost wheel turn one here. Yeah, we actually can't wheel turn one here unless we draw a land. If we draw a land, we might, but otherwise the turn two wheel with all this mana is still really good. So yeah, let's keep this. We'll start with me drawing a card. Land for turn will be a Volcanic Island. I will cast a Mox Diamond, pitching a Taiga. I'll tap this Mox Diamond to cast a Dark Ritual, making three black mana. I'll use two of them to cast this Talisman of Dominance. I will ex exile an Elvish Spirit Guide for green, use that green to cast a Ignoble Hierarch. Then I'll tap two and use my last black mana to cast a Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> That's his favorite. Uh, Wheel of Fortune resolves. We each discard our hands and draw seven. After wheel, I will cast this Lotus Petal. Whoops. I will immediately crack it to cast a Imperial Seal. I will put this card on top, and then I pass my turn. That was a turn. Land for turns underground. See, pass. I draw for turn. I will play this Gluted Delta. I will play an LED, and I will pass. Draw a card. Pass. pass. I wish I had a better like blowout potential from this really good start, but uh, we're just playing it slow. Playing an underground sea, tapping three mana for a risky study. So as you can see here, I have I do have the two mana left, so I could just cast my commander. The problem is that my commander doesn't do a lot. And while it would enable my free spells to work, like the commander spells, which is kind of the reason I run this commander when, when, when it's this cheap, uh, I, I do have spells I can cast for mana in Swan Song. So instead of just casting my commander, tapping out and hoping to draw into something, I'll just sit back, keep Swan Song up if I need it. It doesn't look like it, I'll need it, but like developing, developing my commander early, it doesn't have that much value to me. So I'll just sit back and be a bit mana ineffective here. So instead of casting my commander, I will just pass. Cast Blood Crypt and pass. All right, on your end step, I am going to sack and crack Gluted Delta. Breeding Pool. Oh, sorry, I discarded the Breeding Pool. I'm not going to find a Breeding Pool. I will find... I'll just find a trap. Play this Underground Sea and pass. Draw a card. Ancient Tomb into casting this Affetto Alchemist. This is a creature that can tap to untap target artifact or creature. So it's kind of strange dork. Very good with the one ring. I am using the ancient tomb to 
pay for the Rhystic study, then I pass. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a Marshlands, and I will fetch Finding a Tundra. Then I will pay two mana to cast my commander, Ezio. So Ezio is a 3-2 menace for two. Pretty good stat line. Also, assassin spells I cast have free running, which means that if it's an assassin creature, which I have none, uh, <laughs> I can cast them for two black if I've attacked with a assassin, I believe, or a assassin. That's you. If I dealt combat damage with an assassin. Also, it's another worthless <laughs> piece of text. It's okay. No, it's really useful because it has all five colors, which makes them five colored. Which says that if he deals combat damage to the player that has 10 or less life, I can pay Wuberg to kill them. Maybe that happens. Probably doesn't. But yeah, it's basically just a two mana five color commander. And with him in play, I will pass turn. Dark Heart for turn. Then for turn is a Morphic Pool. We're playing uh, Casual Commander today. Malcolm. Not paying for Rustic. Uh, I'm playing Orcish Bowmaster. I cannot. Rustic. I cannot pay. I draw for Rustic. On ETB, I'm going to kill the Ignoble. Malcolm resolves, and I pass turn. Move to my turn. Play this Arid Mesa as my land for turn. Crack the Arid Mesa and go look for a white source. A Savannah. Derevi. I cannot pay. Derevi trigger. I will untap this. Tropical Island. I will go to combat. I'm going to swing at, at you, Red Eric. No blocks. I will have a, an additional Drevery trigger. Untap Underground Sea. I'll play a Bloodstained Mire this turn. Sacrifice that immediately. Finding a Bayou, tap it for green, cast a Elves of Deep Shadow using Ancient Tomb to pay for the Rhystic Study. And then I pass. You don't have to respect my Rhystic. It's fine. I but pay my, my taxes. <laughs> take my turn. Oh, I <laughs> might draws this game. Command tower, land for turn. Move to combat. I'll swing a menace 3 2 at you, Rhetoric. No blocks. You'll take three. Nothing else happens. And I will just pass turn. Land for turn is a mana confluence. I will tap four to account for Rhystic Study. And I'll cast Glinthorn Buccaneer. Pontus, do I look like a guy with a turn one wheel? I pass priority on this. Yeah, so, so basically what, I'm, what I got to ask you is like, so do you have anything? Because I have one play I can do right now. I'll just highlight it to the audience so they understand. Okay. But it's really weird and it doesn't really do it. So like either I'm trusting you that you have something or I do this and it basically doesn't do anything. And I'll just waste potentially to help you out later. Uh, well, I do have something, but I don't like using my something because of your something. Heuristics that is annoying. Oh. I don't like it. Oh, that 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 sounds like a, a non-issue for me then. So I'll just pass. How about this, Pontus? How about I <laughs> don't do? How about I interact if I you don't put resolve your heuristics that trigger? Well, I have to resolve them. But how about you don't? Maybe I don't how draw. about you don't draw <laughs> then? But me drawing is a part of the solution, right? No, it's not part of the resolution. I have something that deals. Yeah, there's a bowmaster. No, no, no. My thing will deal with it without the bowmaster. Hey, two Rhystic study, two Rhystic study, study triggers also solves the problem. Let's go ahead. Glithorn Buccaneer resolves. I will move to combat. There is some fun in listening to your opponents uh, basically try to jostle for using their cards or not. Nevertheless, I'm in combat. I am going to send uh, Malcolm at Mons and Glithorn Buccaneer at Pontus. Mons, untap my commander. That will kill I your commander and that. it will stop it. I like that. That's, that does not... <laughs> yeah, I will untap your... I will use my creature to untap target creature. I will target this creature. No, not your creature, Pontus. We'll target my creature. Yeah. I would like oh. to demonstrate a loop of infinite untapping and uh, tapping and feto... Uh, I, because I can. Mm -hmm. And then, after doing this infinitely, I will untap your commander, Pontus. Thank you me. can throw it under the bus. I will now block with my commander. Okay. Well, I did not expect that. My Glithorn will survive, your commander dies, and I will make a treasure. Mons takes two. Pontus, I am very proud of you. Moving out of combat, friends, I tried. I tried to win with this Glithorn Buccaneer. We almost got there. That's okay. Other than that, I have six cards in hand. I'll pass turn. Go to my turn. Bountiful Promenade as my land for turn. Cast Asaka. Yeah, I'll pay. I will go to combat. My army... Bowmasters and Derevi all at Pantos. No blocks. Take five. No six. All right. I will have three untapped triggers. My turn. Draw a card. City of Brass. Land drop. Tap this for black. Tap this for two colorless. Cost Wishclaw Talisman. Paying for Rhystic Study. And then I pass turn. 
could. My turn. Exciting. Land for turn would be a mana confluence. I'll tap two and then two more to cast my commander. Such an exciting game. Pass turn. Watery Grave, I'll take two damage. I will move to combat. I am going to respond to the move to combat, and I am going to tap one and cast this chain of vapor targeting the Ristic study. <laughs> Trigger your Ristic study. I will pay. I'll miss up the chain of vapor. Back I mean, that, that means he owns stopping it, so. Pontus, are we literally going to have a discussion about this again? If you're mentally misstepping the chain of vapor, you clearly have something, so I will... Uh, pass on him trying well, to go to combat. Mons, you told me you had stuff as well. What? How about this? I will use my mm -hmm. stuff if you don't draw a card from Ristic Study from my stuff. How about that? Depends what your stuff is. Something that will stop him from winning this turn. I'm being too cringe. I can't do this. I'll just <laughs> respond myself. <laughs> I'll snap the Glithorn. Yikes. Hey, you know, it's entertainment at least. I have no response for Glithorn Buccaneer being snapped. So that will go back to my hand. I will untap two lands. Okay, we were in beginning of combat when that happened, so now I'm declaring attackers, and I will just, uh, yeah, I'll attack uh, Pontus for two. No looks, take two. Malcolm connects, I make another treasure, and I am going to, and with that, I pass turn. I'm going, paying for Ristic, going to play this Delighted Halfling. I'll go to combat. Asuka is going at Rhetoric, as is the Bowmasters. Terevi and Orc Army are both going at Atas. No blocks, take five. All right, I will have uh, four untapped triggers. I am going to pay three and two life and cast this Phyrexian Metamorph. I'll, I'll put one onto Malcolm. There as a copy of a Wish Claw Talisman. Pay one and activate the Wish Claw, and I will oh. give it to rhetoric find this card two and cast a dockside extortionist i cannot pay i will kill malcolm i will respond i'm going to tap two actually three um so that i can pay for ristic study as well and i'm going to cast march of the swirling mists targeting malcolm dockside resolves uh trigger five treasures i will now pay four treasures and cast a meal. I will sack Lion's Eye Diamond for three blue, discarding right. the Cyclonic yep. Rift. I will activate Emil targeting Dockside. In response to In response your Emil to your activation Emil targeting Dockside, I will Pongify Emil. Emil. You still get the Dockside yep. treasure, you still get the but, uh, treasure but as your Hellbent, uh, I don't think I care. I had to try. And I'm paying for Ristic Study floating a colorless man. My flesh duplicate will enter as a Dockside Extortionist. Dockside ETB Trigger. But we can make it really cool. We are going to use the Colorless Floating to activate Wish Claw Talisman. Now here's another cool thing. I can tap this, and let's tap this one as well, to untap Wish Claw Talisman, and then activate Wish Claw Talisman again. This means that we are going to generate two Wish Claw Search Effects, and then we're going to increase the Dockside mana value from it. I will find these two cards and put them directly into my hand, and then I will give uh, Kusa can have two wish, uh, one wish claw with one counter on it. So as I just gave away the wish claw, I'm getting five treasures. I will sack two of those, having three left, casting fast as Oracle, and I will pay for the Rhystic Study trigger. And then I will use one or well two treasures in the end to cast Consult, also paying for Rhystic Study. I will. Swan Song the consult? In response to you Swan Song, I will sacrifice the last treasure to Fluster Storm your Swan Song. I can't pay for Ristic Study this time. I will draw first. Bowmaster Mount's face. I guess I deserve that. I'm passing on Fluster Storm. It counters my Swan Song. But then I'm fiercing the consults. That does it. I have nothing more against that. So yeah. Meh. Fastest Oracle ETB. I will look at the top three cards. Uh, let's do it like... We actually have two pretty decent options, either Demonic Tutor or Mystic Remora. I think I'm gonna put Demonic Tutor on top because they have kind of become hellbent. I don't think Redrick is going to cast much creature, uh, non-creature spells. Kusa is hellbent, Pontus isn't really doing anything, so I'm gonna grab the Demonic Tutor on top of my library and send the two other to the bottom. And then I'm passing the turn. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a Bloodstained Mire, and I would like to crack it. Finding a Badlands, I'll then tap two to cast this Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual 
makes five black mana. I'll use four black mana to cast a Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing my Talisman of Dominance to the bargain cost. Let's politic, Pontus. I have something in my hand that can deal with you. But it could also okay. maybe deal with Redrick. But if you're winning, I kind of have to use it. And I, I couldn't... You believe yeah. that it's a counterspell, but because I didn't... I, you believe that I don't have any counterspells because I pass on everything you did on your turn. But this is a counterspell that only works now. Guess what it is? Yeah, it's a it's a mind break trap. No. Oh, force negation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay, if you're asking me to do it, I guess you have interaction. But I should get if you're force of negation, pitching Psychrift on your besieged mirror, not paying for his study. Uh, I will deflecting spots the force negation. I'm hell bent now. So deflecting spot while resolving will redirect force negation to deflecting spot itself because that's the only other legal target, uh, and then force negation will fizzle. And then Besiege will resolve. Finding and casting a Mnemonic Betrayal. So to start us off, I will cast a Chrome Mox, imprinting a Savin's Reclamation. Then I will cast a Lion's Eye Diamond from Kusa's Graveyard, the Chrome Mox was from Motorik's Graveyard. Then, since Mnemonic Betrayal lets me use mana as it, if it was any color, I'll use the Black Floating from Ritual I casted to, ca to cast a Pongify, targeting the uh, Thassa Circle on Mons Board. Then I'll use the White Floating er, from Chrome Mox, to cast a reanimate from Rhetoric's graveyard, targeting the Oracle. So reanimate will resolve, putting Tansa's Oracle into play, I lose two life, and in response to the ETB, I will tap a Tundra, just because that's funny, to cast a consultation from Monster Graveyard to exile my library. It resolves, and then Tansa's Oracle ETB, and I will win the game. Good game. So from that very explosive start, I kind of petered out. Uh, I could have tutored more aggressively. I could have tutored for a Necropotence, I guess instead but like i'm not sure if that was the correct choice for me but everyone went for a win and eventually the risk study still won the game pretty much that wheel killed me i really wanted that turn mm. one the <laughs> ring could have been a complete sure. change yeah for sure uh rhetoric put on the most win attempts but still didn't really get there sadly <laughs> yeah yeah i mean um hey this time i actually played glenhorn when you're supposed to um <laughs> yeah, it was fun yeah. to watch you guys uh squirm a little bit, try to decide what to do. My plan was actually play Limdul's Vaults and then use the Wish Claw if mm. I got to my turn. I was, I was like, is this actually going to happen? Am I going to get there? But I had no interaction. I'm just sitting drawing cards, like just top decking, really. I, I didn't have anything to my second to last draw. I just drew lands and counter spells the whole game. The second to last draw was Besiege the Mirror, which won the game. That was a fun game. Good game, everyone. And uh, we'll see all of you in the audience in the next video. Bye! Bye-bye!